Welcome to Pressure Points. Our topic is Apple getting ready to jump into the generative AI race. That, of course, will come on June 10th at the WWDC keynote. And as far as pressure points, we know there's going to be a lot of talk of AI at the event. I wanted to narrow into what I think is the most significant news or significant development there, and then talk about some less significant but still AI-related uh, developments. And so the pressure point is related to what I believe is going to be a monumental change in the OS both iOS and Mac OS. I think it's going to be the most significant change since the 1980s with the point and click methodology was established. That methodology was the same framework that was used for the scroll and tap when iOS was announced in 2007. And so I kind of think of those two as the same general paradigms. But what I think we will see in June is a new paradigm related to how the OS interacts with different apps and programs on the devices. And specifically, instead of using a scroll or a point type of a methodology, it will use a either text or voice input prompting to get actions done. And so at the most basic level, an example would be in the old paradigm, you would open your phone, You'd go to an app, you tap in the app, you go to the hamburger menu, you'd find what you're looking for, and then you execute that. So, for example, if you were getting an Uber, that would be the process of, of summoning an Uber. And the new paradigm, you would either through text or voice, just ask your phone, get me an Uber to the airport. And the Uber app would have some links built into that would connect to the underlying uh, operating system that has that generative feature and together they would work to perform the task. And so it just essentially takes friction out of the process. You can imagine another example would be order me a pizza or kind of the endless examples. Uh, so I think that this new paradigm shift is something that we'll hear more about and I would consider it the most significant announcement at WWDC. Uh, this, of course, would be a big step forward, a huge step forward for Apple, but it would not be as significant relative to what's already happened. And at Microsoft and Google's Developer Day in 2023, so this is May of 2023, both companies announced variations of their, uh, uh, in Microsoft's case, the Windows operating system powered by Copilot, which did some of that same functionality that I just described, and separately as Google, even though uh, they don't really talk as much about like an operating system, but talked about different, like the G Suite of products, allowing you to uh, use prompts to get work done and generate text for emails, things like that, calendars. And so there is this uh, uh, piece of WWDC, which is, some of it is playing catch up to what has already been announced by Microsoft and Google. And keep in mind that Microsoft and Google will have their 2024 dev days before WWDC. And so presumably that bar is going to get even wider. So, you know, what's that gap that Apple's going to close? That's going to be one kind of uh, contour to the debate around how to think about what's going on between these big tech giants. But another piece that's, I think, less relevant, what I think is more relevant, is just relative to the Apple experience. Uh, it will take a meaningful step forward relative to how the operating system interacts with the user. And so that's what I think is the biggest pressure point, just simply a better way to interact with your operating systems. They will announce it. It probably ends up coming out in the fall. As far as what powers those changes, whether it's their own MM1 model, whether that includes licensing some features from GPT or Gemini, to be determined. But the the most, I think, important context is just this step forward in terms of how their OS works. So that's the pressure point. I do want to mention a couple other pieces, what I think will come out from the developer conference related to AI. And one is uh, tools to make it easier for developers to add AI models to their applications. And so, again, how this comes to fruition, whether it's linking to an Apple Foundation model that 
uh, should be announced, this MM1 uh, smaller model or working with GPT or Gemini, that could be the case as well. And of course, as part of that, infusing generative AI into Apple's suite of products, whether it's in messaging today, it does predictive text, it does not do generative AI, but actually generative uh, messaging, emails, pages, numbers, calendars, all of that should start to see some impact from generative AI. And then the last piece is what's going to happen with Siri. And of course, Siri is comically behind when it comes to AI, even though they had a big opportunity, call it almost 10 years ago, to be a pioneer around the topic. And uh, I think the case, what they could add is just simple functionality to make it more conversational. So I don't believe that we're going to see Siri powered by AI more conversational in the summer. It probably is going to be late 2024, but I kind of put that as uh, something that I'm optimistic we'll see. So to put it together, I think the biggest news is going to be relative to the new operating system. I think we're going to see ways for developers to integrate AI into some of their apps. And then uh, the last piece is related to uh, what can happen to Siri. I do want to add another piece, just kind of longer term, and we're likely not going to hear anything about this, but I do think longer term Apple has a unique opportunity around personalized personalized AI, and this would be the ability for apps to do complicated tasks on their own. Beyond just summoning an Uber, it would be uh, resolving, for example, uh, maybe an issue you have with your uh, your cable company about a bill. Uh, there can be uh, an opportunity, there is an opportunity with App Apple just given their their brand around privacy to create a product around that, but that is down the road. And so uh, that's my expectations for WWDC. It will be a big day for Apple. And on behalf of this episode of Pressure Points, I'm Gene. Bye for now.